Bienvenidos mis amigos, ¿cómo está? Cabrones, ay, pásale, pásale. Bienvenidos, bienvenidos a mi casa. Gracias por ver mi video. Anyway, uh, what this video is about is uh, one of my uh, new subscribers. He asked when I give a little uh, shout out in the chat my opinion on what I think about the Mexicans. Well, I'm gonna tell you something. I've never met finer people in my life, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart. My absolute best friends are Mexican. And, uh, now my opinion about illegally crossing the border comes with mixed emotion. Because I've met some, some mighty fine people, and I call them my friends that had to do whatever they could to get into this country. But the, but they've been here like 15, 20 years, you know, and working their tails off and just being, you know, productive members of society and, and paying taxes and, you know, uh, owning property and automobiles and paying all kinds of fees and taxes and not, not counting on the local uh, health department to provide their medical care. Okay? But then there's a bunch of them that are. Uh, a bunch of, bunch of uh, the Mexican people are using our, uh, wearing out our county health departments where they get you know, free medical care and inoculations, vaccinations, checkups, birth control, whatever. Wearing us out. And really digging into the budget. But, I welcome any anybody that wants to enter our country legally. Okay, legally being the the key word there. Uh, now, I had a young man that was working at a local restaurant here, and he asked me, "Would I help get his wife here on a honest to God on an honest HB 111 work visa?" We filled out all the paperwork, sent in all the fees. And hell, I bought plane tickets, the whole nine yards. Went down to the American Consulate in Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico. And got down there and they wouldn't give her a visa. I said, why not? Oh, well, we only give out X number. And, uh, you know, we start that on uh, January 1st. And usually by January 20th, they're all gone. And this was like in April. And I said, you sons of bitches. Oh, I was hot, man. I spent a bunch of money. And our fucking consulate down there wouldn't tell me over the telephone, I'm sorry, you know, we've, we've already given out all those visas for the year. But by God, they sure took the application fees. Them sons of bitches. And I told the woman behind the glass, I said, I understand why you're behind a glass wall now, by God. And I said, this is really fucked up. I said, this young lady and her children could be across the border tomorrow morning. All I gotta do is pay a damn coyote. And they're, they're across the border tomorrow morning. And I'm down here trying to do everything legal. Give the woman a job, place to live, the whole bit. And uh, I said, well, she said, you can marry her. I said, fuck you. So, really, well, the whole time I was in Mexico, I never met any people down there I didn't like. And now I'm not talking about going to a tourist town. I ain't talking about going to Veracruz or Acapulco or Cozumel or anything like that, because those are tourist towns. I'm about actually going into deep into Mexico to the little bitty towns, the little just little tiny towns where people you can go in their home and. If they've got one bean in their house, half of that bean is yours. That's how good-hearted they are. And uh, my son needed some dental work, so I took him down to Aranda Salisco to my buddy's family dentist, 
And we ain't talking about no hack at the border. We're talking about 12 hours south of the border. Uh, uh, this gentleman studied Guadalajara. His son and daughter-in-law studied at uh, UCLA. We're talking about people know what they're doing and educated, okay? And uh, anyway, my son needed some dental work, and here it was going to be twenty-five hundred dollars. Down there it was two hundred and fifty. Excellent care. But anyway, I took him down there. I wanted him to see what it's like to actually be poor. My children have never had to suffer. I've been fortunate. My wife and I worked hard and made good money, and we could give the kids anything they needed and most of their wants. So. Um, I'm happy I could do that. But he got down there. It was a real eye opener for him. He he never imagined people lived that poor. Uh, but he also saw how happy they were. It's, it's funny, you know. Didn't have shit, but they love life. They celebrate life. So getting back to the original question, what do I think about these Mexicans that are uh, sneaking across the border? Again. I welcome anybody that wants to come here legally, and uh, uh, that's that says it all right there, legally, because our country does have a quota that they do allow in. Okay, so just, that's a moot point there. Now, what about the people that sneak in? I want to tell you something. If if my children are starving. If my wife is going hungry, I'm going to do anything in my power to feed and clothe my family and put a roof over their head. And if that means that I got to swim a river or use a tunnel or whatever to go somewhere I'm not really supposed to go, but I can earn a living to support my wife and kids, I'm going to do whatever I've got to do. All right? And I've, I see this so much, and I see these young people that have that have snuck into here and been here for for a long time, and they and they send money home every payday. They send them money home to their parents, their their wives, or kids. Uh, one young man came here when he was 15 years old. Been gone from home since he was 15. And he was 27, going back for the first time. Been here in the United States 12 years, had not seen his mother for 12 solid years. Talked on the phone, but hadn't laid eyes on one another in 12 years. Now, um, would you be willing to do that? Would you be willing to leave your family just so you can make some money to keep them alive, provide for them? You know, that's a hell of a sacrifice this young man made, and I drove him home. I drove him all the way from right here in Tennessee, all the way across the border, 12 hours south, straight to his mom and dad, or his mama's house. And uh, uh, I took uh, another boy home. Well, no, it was that same boy. And we went to his grandfather's house, and his grandfather was in tears and thank me and thank me and thank me for bringing his grandson home because he didn't think he'd ever see him again. And then the gentleman passed away about 18 months later. And uh, I'd been to his home several times, so it was, you know, it was heartbreaking. But, uh, no, it's not right that we have illegal, we have people entering our country illegally. But, I'm going to do anything I can to support my family, and I don't blame them for doing it. And I don't blame anybody that's coming in here to work, okay? Now, you want to just come in here just to live off our, our, our uh, just want to come in here to live off our welfare system? No, I don't agree with that. But let me ask you something. You want to work out in them damn fields in California? You know, them some bitches work hard now. I'm gonna tell you what, I can't keep up with them. I never could keep up with them. They're working as little sons of bitches I've ever seen in my life. 
but good hearted. So, you know, it's kind of hard to answer the question, you know, what I think about it, but I've tried to hit on all the points I can. So, adios mis amigos, muchas gracias por ver mis videos. Y'all have a wonderful day and a better tomorrow. Bye.